Stop believing what politicians tell you about the middle class. The numbers don't lie, and what I'm about to show you will change how you see your own financial future forever. If you've been feeling like you're working harder than ever, but somehow falling behind, you're not imagining it. The middle class is shrinking, and it's not some vague economic trend. It's a mathematical certainty that's been decades in the making. Today, I'm breaking down the actual numbers, the real data, and the mathematical proof that shows exactly why the middle class is disappearing right before our eyes. This isn't about opinions or politics. This is about cold, hard math that affects your wallet right now. Let's start with something simple. Back in 1970, about 61% of American households were considered middle class. Fast forward to today, and that number has dropped to around 50%. That's over 10% of the entire population that has either moved up or fallen down. But here's the thing most people get wrong. They think half went up and half went down. The math tells a very different story. When we look at where people actually went, the data shows that roughly 7% moved into upper income brackets, while a much larger percentage fell into lower income brackets. That means for every person who climbed up, more than two people fell down. And this isn't slowing down, it's accelerating. But why? Why is this happening? The answer lies in something economists call the wealth gap velocity. It's not just that rich people are getting richer. It's the speed at which they're pulling away from everyone else. And the math behind it is actually pretty straightforward once you break it down. Exploration, development, let's talk about income growth. Between 1979 and 2020, the average income for the bottom 90% of Americans grew by about 26%. That sounds okay, right? Wrong. Because during that same time period, the income for the top 1% grew by over 160% and the top 0.1%, their income grew by more than 340%. Now, you might be thinking that percentages can be misleading. Maybe the rich just had less to start with, so their growth looks bigger. But let's look at actual dollar amounts. In 1979, the average household in the middle, 60% of income earners, made about $58,000 a year when adjusted for inflation. Compare that to the top 1%. In 1979, they averaged about $420,000 a year. Today, they average over $1.7 million. That's an increase of $1.3 million. So while middle-class families gained $15,000 in four decades, the wealthy gained nearly $1.3 million. The gap isn't just growing, it's exploding, but income is only part of the story. The real killer is what's happening to the cost of living. And this is where the math gets really ugly. Housing costs have increased by over 400% since 1980. Healthcare costs are up over 500%. College tuition? Try 750%. Meanwhile, wages for middle-class workers have barely kept pace with basic inflation. This creates what I call the compression effect. You're being squeezed from both sides. Your income is growing slowly, but your biggest expenses are growing at three to seven times the rate of inflation. Let me give you a concrete example. In 1980, the median home price was about $64,000. The median household income was about $21,000. That means a house cost roughly three times your annual income. Today, the median home price is around $420,000. The median household income is about $75,000. Now, a house costs 5.6 times your annual income. The math has fundamentally changed against you. This isn't just about houses, though. Let's look at college. In 1980, a year of college at a public university cost about $1,800. That same median household making $21,000 could cover a year of college with less than one month's income. Today, a year at a public university costs about $28,000. With a median household income of $75,000, that's now more than four months of income. And that's assuming you have no other expenses, which obviously isn't realistic. Here's where it gets mathematical. When your biggest expenses grow faster than your income, you don't just stay in place, you fall behind exponentially. Let me explain what I mean by exponentially. If your income grows at 2% per year, but your housing costs grow at 5% per year, you're not just losing 3% per year, you're losing ground in a compounding way. After 10 years, your income is up 22%, your housing cost is up 63%. After 20 years, your income is up 49%, your housing cost is up 165%. In 
After 30 years, your income is up 81%. Your housing cost is up 332%. This is the mathematical trap that's destroying the middle class. The gap doesn't just grow, it accelerates. But there's another piece to this puzzle that makes it even worse. It's called the asset inflation gap. And this is probably the most important part of understanding why the middle class is disappearing. The wealthy own assets, stocks, real estate, businesses. The middle class owns mostly their labor and maybe a house. When the Federal Reserve prints money and keeps interest rates low, asset prices go up. Stock market hits record highs. Real estate values soar. Business valuations explode. But wages, they barely move. Since 2000, the S&P 500 has gone up over 250%, even accounting for crashes. Real estate in major markets has doubled or tripled. But median wages, they've gone up about 25% after inflation. That's a 10x difference in growth rates. Here's the math that really matters. Multiply that across millions of households and you can see exactly why the middle class is shrinking. It's not because people are lazy or making bad choices. It's because the mathematical structure of the economy is designed to transfer wealth upward. Now let's talk about debt, because this is where the middle class gets absolutely crushed. When your expenses grow faster than your income, you have two choices, cut back on your lifestyle or go into debt. Most people choose debt because cutting back often means giving up things like healthcare, education, or housing in a safe area. The average middle-class household now carries about $145,000 in debt. Mortgage, car loans, credit cards, student loans, all of it. That debt costs money to service. At an average interest rate of about 6%, that's $8,700 per year just to pay interest. That's $8,700 that doesn't build wealth, doesn't improve your life, doesn't get you ahead. It's just the cost of staying in place. Meanwhile, Wealthy households are using debt differently. They borrow money at low rates to buy assets that appreciate. This is called leverage, and it's one of the main tools the wealthy use to get wealthier. When you borrow at 3% to buy an asset that returns 10%, you're making 7% on money that isn't even yours. The middle class borrows at 6% to buy depreciating items or just to cover basic living expenses. That's a negative 6% return. The math here is brutal. Every year that you pay 6% interest on debt, while the wealthy earn 10% returns on assets. The gap between you grows by 16%. Not 6%, not 10%, 16%. Because while you're going down, they're going up. Let's add another layer to this. Taxes. The middle class pays the highest effective tax rate when you account for income tax, payroll tax, sales tax, and property tax. A household making $75,000 pays about 30% to 35% of their income in total taxes. Someone making $5 million might pay 25% because so much of their income comes from capital gains, which are taxed at lower rates. This means the middle class keeps 65 to 70 cents of every dollar earned. The wealthy keeps 75 cents or more. Over a lifetime of work, this difference is massive. On $75,000 a year for 40 years, that's $3 million in gross income. Keeping 67% means you actually get $2 million. If you kept 75% like the wealthy do, you'd have $2.25 million. That's a $250,000 difference just from the tax structure. But it gets worse because the wealthy also have access to tax strategies. The middle class doesn't. Retirement accounts. Sure but also things like depreciation, cost segregation, opportunity zones, and charitable trusts. These tools can reduce their effective tax rate even further. The math is designed to benefit people who already have money. Now let's talk about inflation, because this is the silent killer of the middle class. When the money supply grows by 7% in a year, but your wages only grow by 2%, you've lost 5% of your purchasing power. That might not sound like much, but let's do the math over time. Start with $50,000 in purchasing power. After one year of 5% real decline, you have $47,500 in purchasing power. After five years, you have $38,500. After 10 years, you have $30,000. After 20 years, you have $18,000. Your salary might say $50,000, but you can only buy what $18,000 used to buy. You've lost 64% of your purchasing power. 
This is why your parents could afford a house, college, and health care on a single income, but you can't afford any of that on two incomes. The math has shifted against you. And here's the really scary part. This process is accelerating. In the 1970s, it took about 30 years for the wealth gap to become noticeable. In the 2000s, it took about 15 years. Since 2020, we've seen more wealth concentration in three years than we saw in the entire decade of the 2010s. The velocity of wealth transfer is increasing. And if you're in the middle class, that means you're falling behind faster than ever before. Let me show you one more calculation that brings this all together. Let's compare two people starting out in 1980 versus 2024. Person A in 1980 buys a house for $64,000 with a $12,800 down payment, gets a degree for $7,200 total, starts working at $21,000 per year. Their total initial investment into adulthood is $20,000 over 30 years. Their house appreciates to $200,000, their income grows to $50,000, and they have no student debt. Net gain. They own a $200,000 asset free and clear, minus the $64,000 paid plus interest, and they earned over $1 million in wages. Person B in 2024 buys a house for $420,000 with an $84,000 down payment, gets a degree for $112,000 total, financed through loans, starts working at $75,000 per year, their total initial investment into adulthood is $84,000 cash plus $112,000 in debt. That's $196,000 in the hole before they even start. Over 30 years, even if their house appreciates at the same rate, they'll still be paying off student loans for the first decade, which delays wealth building by 10 years. Person A had to come up with $20,000 and was on track to build wealth. Person B has to come up with $84,000 and starts $112,000 in debt. The math is nearly 10 times harder for person B. That's why the middle class is disappearing. The ladder that used to exist has been pulled up. So here's the key insight that ties all of this together. The middle class isn't disappearing because of any single factor. It's disappearing because of a mathematical inevitability created by multiple factors working together. Slow wage growth plus fast expense growth plus asset inflation plus debt plus taxes plus purchasing Power decline equals a one-way ticket out of the middle class. And the math says that unless something fundamental changes, this will continue. You cannot budget your way out of a mathematical structural problem. If the system is designed to transfer 5% of your wealth upward every year, it doesn't matter how hard you work or how much you save. Over 30 years, you will lose 80% of your relative economic position. That's just math. The middle class as we knew it was built on a specific set of mathematical ratios. Housing at 3x income, college at one month of income, healthcare at 5% of income, retirement savings at 10% of income. When all of those ratios held, the middle class thrived. Today, housing is at 5 to 6x income. College is at 4 to 5 months of income. Healthcare is at 12% to 15% of income. And retirement savings. Most people can't even hit 5% let alone 10%. The ratios have broken down, and with them, the middle class. Look, this isn't about doom and gloom. This is about understanding the actual mathematical reality of what's happening. Once you understand the math, you can make better decisions. You can stop blaming yourself for struggling when the math itself is working against you, and you can start looking for ways to get on the right side of these equations. The middle class is disappearing because the mathematical foundation it was built on has eroded. Wages aren't keeping up with costs. Assets are inflating faster than labor is rewarded. Debt is being used to maintain lifestyle instead of build wealth. And the tax structure favors those who already have money. These are mathematical facts, not opinions. And until we recognize them as mathematical problems that need mathematical solutions, the trend will continue. The middle class will keep shrinking. Wealth will keep concentrating at the top. And the economic ladder will keep getting harder to climb. The question isn't whether this is happening. The math proves it is. The question is what you're going to do about it with this information. If this opened your eyes, watch the next video where I break down what you can actually do about it.